Ukrainian Catholic bishop is hoping for healing after years of abuse within the Catholic Church. Here we are 50 years later where people involved are dead or gone and we're trying to determine um, you know, the facts of the case. In the review of more than a thousand accusations of sex abuse by Catholic clergy in Illinois is ongoing. And as the investigation continues, the Illinois Attorney General's office says there's more evidence the diocese were aware of accusations and disregarded them. Target 3 investigator Renee Cooper has been working on this story for months. And Renee, we haven't had an update in years. It's true. The former attorney general launched an investigation to uncover the extent of sexual abuse of children in the Catholic Church. That was three years ago. Her office published a preliminary report in December of 2018, and that was the last time the public really heard about it until June. I requested an update from the current attorney general, and I found out the number of undisclosed cases has doubled. Now, since then, I've discussed this and the importance of transparency with the church, but first... I want to introduce you to a couple of people who truly understand the stakes in this investigation. A lot of people just think, well, it's just sex, you know, it's just sex. Well, no, it's not. It, it, abuse is manipulative. It is someone else putting a roadblock up in front of you and not allowing you to live your own life. Vicki Schmidt was raised in the Catholic Church at St. John Vianney Parish in Sherman. It was there she grew up under the wing of her pastor and abuser. She says he sexually assaulted her for more than a decade. You know, I just cooperated unwillingly. Sue Lover Fleming says she witnessed her pastor rape her mother at four years old. Nobody should ever have to see what I saw as a four-year-old. And when my mom saw me, she yelled for me to go back up the steps. Well, I tried. I turned around was starting for the stairway and the Monsignor grabbed me and sexually assaulted me. Schmidt, Lover Fleming and her husband Pat met years ago through shared experiences. Since, they've published multiple books. Their stories are shared, among others, in broken trust. Did you and your mom ever have a conversation about that incident? Never one word was ever uttered. Now you gotta remember this is 1939, so abuse doesn't exist. Could a priest do any harm? Of course not. The Illinois Attorney General's office has uncovered at least a thousand child sexual assault accusations never disclosed by the Catholic Church. Current Attorney General Kwame Raoul says some victims may be reporting for the first time. Many other cases were discovered in records taken from the offices of the state's six dioceses. There's nothing to prepare you for the types of stories that. Uh, you hear. Illinois clergy have now publicized 251 credible abuse cases, a quarter of the AG's findings dating back to the 1950s and 60s. Springfield Bishop Thomas Peprocki says discrepancy is in the burden of proof. Whether or not there is reasonable cause to suspect that the abuse occurred. That's a lower bar than you have in criminal court. Although, the Attorney General says it took his office's involvement for the six dioceses to disclose an additional 66 credible cases. A previous posture of, well, if the, if the priest was dead, there's nothing to look into, does not appreciate that there is with regards to that survivor. Frankly, just as church authorities sometimes were slow to believe accusers, I think even civil authorities sometimes were. Bishop Pepperocki tells me the Diocese of Springfield recognized two more cases since 2018. 21 are listed on Springfield's website, created shortly after the AG's investigation began. The Catholic Diocese of Peoria lists 43. Raul says prior to the investigation, two dioceses had similar web pages. Now all six do. We've had to have discussions with them about making it enough, prominent enough and, and, and on their website and, and easy enough to navigate to make it meaningful. I can't think of a worse crime. Although Schmidt says she told the diocese about her abuser more than 20 years ago, his name is not listed on the Springfield website. It was because the abuse, the sexual abuse, started at 18, even though I had been groomed from the age of 8. I asked the Springfield bishop how the church handles clergy abuse of adults. That doesn't have the same zero tolerance standard for adults. Well, I, I'm not aware that we've had cases of uh, sexual assault or rape, I mean, the, that I'm aware of. I'm sure you've heard of Vicki Schmidt. Mm -hmm. That would be one of those cases within the church. Mm -hmm. 
Paparanki did not know Schmidt's abuser. The bishop came to Springfield years after he died. And since then, change has been happening at Illinois Diocese. Paparanki was instrumental in creating a nine-person review board for accusations, adopted in Springfield by 2002. Most of whom were not uh, priests or, or religious. Paparanki says if a case is substantiated, clergy members are removed from active ministry. In 2010, when Paparanki arrived in Springfield, he implemented a training program for all staff. To look for signs. That unaddressed trauma, even from de decades ago, can still have impact to today. And it's like, well, why? For years, Lobber Fleming hid away. If you're seen, you're hurt. You get hurt really big time. You know, it kept me from getting married and starting a family like most of my peers. Schmidt says recovery takes years, decades even. Think about it. Schmidt was abused roughly between 1975 and 1989. 1990, she began therapy. Then in 91, she worked up the courage to tell her therapist she was sexually abused. And in 93, she told her family and the diocese. I had to stop and, and vomit on the way over. But as soon as they heard my story um, at that time, um, they cut off all communication with me. In 2007, her full story was told for the very first time in Broken Trust. Fast forward to 2019, and Schmidt said her abuser's name out loud in public for the first time. Peter Mascari. 17 years after his death, he had never been criminally charged. The ha hallmark of our programs for the last 30 years is really reaching out to the victims as well and making counseling available. Schmidt wants to see that service extended to family of survivors. No one reached out to my parents. No one. And my father was so angry. He was so angry. In fact, a year after that, he had a heart attack and a stroke. She also wants to see more accountability for priests who abuse vulnerable adults. You just can't abuse people like that and then not, and not take responsibility for it, especially, especially in a Christian environment. Bishop Paparaki says even with progress, the church will not let its guard down. We need to keep working on it. I think it's in the interest of the Catholic Church to convey they've taken this seriously so as that people can have a restoration of faith in the institution and be confident that this type of history won't repeat itself. Raul tells me the investigation will last as long as it takes to make sure every survivor who wants to be heard is. The attorney general says he hopes to issue a full report by the end of the year. Now, the reason I began diving into the AG's investigation in the, in the first place is an Instagram page sent in a tip. You're looking at it here. There are now more than 300 posts from survivors and others about abuse in central Illinois churches. Not necessarily Catholic churches, but several denominations. So, I called the Attorney General's office to find out if they're tracking how often sexual abuse is happening in all religious organizations. The short answer is no. I'm told that statistic does not exist. I don't have uh, independent knowledge of systemic abuses in other sort of denominations. So that's not to say that it doesn't exist. My uh, studies on, on this is that other denominations are also dealing with this, Christian and non-Christian denominations, as well as outside of churches. Abuse is abuse is abuse is abuse. And for survivors out there, Schmidt and the Flemings can tell you healing is possible. Schmidt says counseling and being a part of writing these books helped her discover who she is. Pat and Sue even went on to work with other victims and church leaders who abused minors. All three are very active in international conversations surrounding reform and healing, both for victims and abusers, many of whom Pat Fleming says were abused themselves as children. And I, of course, I've got much more of this story online on WCIA.com slash Target 3. Back to you. Some powerful stories there. Renee, thank you for that.